here. Uh, this video is my top five entry uh, level certifications for IT. Um, this is the year 2014. It's almost the end. It's October. And I wanted to go ahead and put out my video and my opinion on the top five certs one can get when trying to move into IT or trying to uh, establish themselves and make sure that they can uh, continually find work, whether it's contracting or full time employment, with some of the certifications that might be expected or will help you in entry level type roles. Um, so the roles that I'm going to be looking at are going to be like desktop, desktop support, help desk, uh, network uh, technician, but stuff that's on the uh, entry level. Um, these positions should play between 30,000 and 60,000. Obviously, you're going to need maybe three to four years of experience in these search to get up to 60,000 as well as, you know, great job performance and work ethic. Uh, with experience and good work ethic, you will obviously be able to reach up to these uh, higher end ranges of uh, the range that I gave between 30 and 60. You also will need to know uh, the market and how to sell yourself. <laughs> I can't uh, uh, understate that. <clears throat> so let's jump right in. The first uh, certification, number five on my list, is the CompTIA Security Plus. So that price though, right? How much does the exam cost? Well, currently today it's costing about $293 per exam, um, depending on if you need to retake it or not, if you pass or fail. Uh, it's a pretty hefty amount for a CompTIA level exam, but actually all CompTIA exams cost a significant amount of money nowadays. Uh, this is an entry-level computer uh, security exam. Uh, it is approved by the U.S. Department of Defense to meet IA technical and management certification requirements. So for certain jobs in IT in the Department of Defense for the government, they do expect you to have at least a security plus. Uh, there are other certifications that you can have in lieu of that, that one, uh, but it is one that will give you the ability to take on certain roles in uh, DOD that you might not be able to without the security plus, so it has that benefit. Uh, every three years, you're going to have to recertify and or go through the CompTIA Continuing Education Program to keep it uh, current. Uh, it's a foundation cert for the InfoSec path. So if you're trying to go into the information security, security field, uh, Security Plus is like the first one that you would be able to get. They don't really offer a certification that's earlier than the Security Plus for getting into um, information security. So uh, it's a good foundation one in that regard. Uh, it can also waive a year off the CISSP five-year experience requirement. So CISSP, you have to have five years of experience. Um, certain waivers come into play depending on your education background and your certification. So Security Plus is one of the certifications that you can have that can waive a full year off your five-year experience requirement. Um, don't believe the hype. Um, as you can see, I have a graph down here that displays uh, relevant salary information for each certification that we're going to go through. Uh, the upper end, never really believe that because they say that a security plus certification person might make on the higher end 87, 95, 82,000, 90,000. That's usually people who have 10 plus years of experience and they might also have other certifications which are way higher than security plus. Uh, for instance, myself, I have um, a bunch of certifications and if somebody asked me my salary and I gave them that and they asked me what certification I had and I said security plus they're going to assume that that salary is because of that certification when it's a combination of all my certs and all my um, experience so um, you can probably reasonably look to be making 32 to 42 thousand with just a security plus if you're getting an entry-level um, IT job desktop type job uh, whatever um, using it instead of an A plus or so or so some places might give you that uh, they might give you a, a, a option you know to work for them without having an A plus if you have your security plus but you're not going to make much more than 32 to 42 thousand in that type of a role. Uh, the next certification I have here is the MCTS 7680 Windows 7 configura uh, configuring uh, it's retired now, so that sucks. Uh, however, uh, I'll explain a little bit why I still have it listed. Uh, the price is about $150, so that's pretty reasonable considering um, what you get for it uh, or what you did get for it. 
It measures skills in relation to installing, upgrading, and migrating Windows 7, deploying Windows 7, hardware software configuration on Windows 7, network connectivity on Windows 7, etc. You get it, right? It's Windows 7. Um, it is a prerequisite for MCSA Windows 7. So if you want to get an MCSA in Windows 7, you're going to need the 7680 anyway. So that's why it's listed, even though the MCTS form of it is retired. Uh, it got retired last year in terms of being able to get the MCTS certification just for taking the 7680. Uh, you still need to take it in order to get the um, MCSA. It provides uh, foundation experience very successfully and is still in demand. Windows 7 support and deployment. So Windows 7 deployment is still going on. I'm, I'm still working for places that have lots of Windows XP machines. You're still going to have that. Um, being able to provide uh, migrations and uh, installs of Windows 7 will still be needed uh, for the next couple of years. So that it can help you transition. So it'll allow you to take on roles, whether they're migration roles or roles just as a uh, desktop support person or up to system administrator and helping to uh, create the images and deploying them out to new devices, net new devices and devices that people need refreshed. When paired with the 7685 or 7686, which is the window, 7685 is the Windows desktop, Windows 7 desktop. Uh, desktop technician and 686 is the enterprise desktop administrator uh, that's more focused on um, imaging and things like that uh, these other certs it helps rounds out your certifications nicely for entry level to mid-level so if you get your MCSA 7 you're definitely looking at mid-level type work uh, from that standpoint with you know the associated experience of between zero to two years uh, you should be able to find mid-level uh, technician work, desktop support, desktop engineering level work after about, you know, two years with um, your MCSA um, and having your 7680 and one of those additional uh, certifications. <coughs> it has a diminished value on resumes. A uh, certification is only earned after a combination of 7680 and another exam. So this is what I mean. You don't have the MCTS anymore, so you can't officially put it on your resume and saying that you now have an MCTS and Windows 7 configuration when you pass your 7680. Uh, I don't know what you do with your resume. That's up to you. Uh, but you can no longer officially, quote unquote, put it on your resume as saying that you have that certification because it's no longer being given for just that exam. However, again, the knowledge that you get from that would be tremendously helpful going forward in your IT entry level experience. So I don't think that it's that negative um, when it comes to getting just because you don't get that certification anymore. Uh, it provides skill set and exposure to provide reliable and quality troubleshooting and Windows knowledge for your growth. So again, this is a foundation level certification, especially with Windows 7. It's probably going to be around until 2019 at most organizations. Maybe Windows 10 will actually be decent enough so that organizations want to move to that one. However, Windows 7 will be around. It is probably going to be the main OS that most enterprises use going forward for the next three, four, five years. So in that regard, getting into Windows 7 now, it's still highly um, in demand and it can be a good foundation uh, for any Windows 10 stuff that you might get going forward whenever that you release that because that probably won't be released until next year at the end of the year and testing materials and certifications for that probably won't be out until 2016. So there you go. You have a couple of years. As you can see, uh, the salary, the low end salaries are more indicative of what you can expect with the MCTS type exam. Uh, you should be able to get between 40, 44 and up for this type of um, certification if it was still a certification. However, um, obviously your, your, your rates will depend on experience and things like that. Next up, we have the Cisco CCNA. This is third on my list. That price though, uh, $295 for the uh, single exam. Uh, if you want to take the two exam approach, which, this, which is the ICND-1 and ICND-2, it's going to be $150 a piece. So about $300, you get to save five bucks if you take it all in one. Uh, I will caution that taking it all in one means that you're going to have to study even longer and even harder than you would if you break up the exam to more manageable chunks. Um, a lot of people will tell you either way is the way to go, so it's up to you. Um, just 
be well aware that it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort to get up to the point that you can pass that exam in one go in the full 200.201 version. Uh, this is a routing and switching exam that gets you basic entry level exposure to Cisco proprietary iOS command line. Um, as many people who are probably in Cisco are well aware that uh, Cisco makes its money on its operating system and the switching and the routing functions of the actual hardware isn't uh, tremendously different than any other hardware and routing uh, and switches when it comes to um, you know competitors. It's all about the command line. It's all about the iOS. Um, so you're going to get a little bit exposure to that. It covers networking past the Network Plus level with coverage of routing protocols, switching protocols, TCP IP configurations and more. It's not as in-depth as the CCMP obviously, but enough to cover any networking knowledge needed by a non-network engineer level technician. So if you have your CCNA and you're not a network engineer and you're not on a networking team, you're probably going to have as much networking information that you will need in order to do your job. And any networking uh, issues that you come across, you would probably be able to diagnose and route those to the right team uh, quickly very quickly so if you're going to be on desktop still if you're going to be on the system side still but you want to have some network uh, knowledge the network plus will probably cover you in that regard but the ccna has a lot more bang for its buck in terms of return on investment it looks a lot better on your resume uh however i do caution that if you're going to get the ccna you probably want to stick to networking however i mean this is the next part it's tremendously uh, it's a tremendous issue getting positions for networking with only the ccna uh, usually it's not enough to procure network positions on its own and that's entirely true you get a ccna you will not be uh handed networking positions at all you might be approached about networking positions that tell you that you need three to four years of experience just for a junior network administration job or a junior network engineering job or they might want you to have experience to all these other networking um, protocols and elements and properties that you don't even get exposure to in the CCNA, which means that the experience comes into play tremendously. Experience holds you back and your CCNA back like a hundred times over. You can get the certification all you want. You're going to be expected to know how to get in the closet, get out the closet, do a lot of things that you will not do without experience and in the case now a lot of places a lot of businesses are expecting you as a entry-level networking person to come in already having two to three years of networking experience even though they're trying to get you to you know take an entry-level networking job <laughs> so it is very difficult um, so I caution you if you're going to get your CCNA uh, please be assured that you're probably going to have to move and transition into that position uh, while working at a place and just hoping that a position opens up or having a friend if you got a friend somewhere if they can get you in you know knowing somebody always helps but it's going to be very difficult for you just to say I have my CCNA and I want a networking job and to be given that job um, positions you should look for will be like knock type positions they're usually like third shift, second shift type positions and, and, and the like. Um, network engineers, network administrators, things like that, CCNA are definitely going to be the ones that you want to go for. Um, you're going to probably be able to get between 46,000 starting for that, uh, depending on your experience. As long as your experience isn't zero, you should be able to at least get in the mid 40 starting out with the CCNA. My second um uh, most useful certification uh, a lot of people would consider it my first and it probably is but uh there's a little bit of a return of investment thing that i uh, want to talk about with my first one so the comptia plus the price uh 374 dollars man <laughs> back when i got my a plus it was not that much that's crazy it's about 188 per exam that's significant bread you've given up a lot of money for this exam uh, CompTIA knows that A plus is pretty much the entry-level cert right it's the quit quit essential IT certification for getting your foot into the door it's usually required or expected for most IT technicians that perform desktop side support cannot stress enough um, I've um, had to hire folks I've had to vet 
resumes, I had to look over things that people had uh, certification wise. I've been approached by recruiters, staffing agencies, hiring managers, and I tell you what often comes out of their mouth is, oh, and he has his A plus. And I'm like, well, I need a senior desktop engineer that knows Active Directory and PowerShell and some scripting and being able to create uh, you know, collections and be able to do group policy and stuff like that. And I don't think that just because he has an A plus, he'll be able to do that. However, it often comes out the amount that they have an A plus. So it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Most people have this concept of having your A plus means that you're in there. So I definitely recommend it because I see it firsthand personally when it comes to having your A plus, what it can do for your exposure and, and, and to getting into IT. Um, highly recommended for beginning IT or entry level IT trying to get into the field with no previous experience or IT skills. If you don't have any previous IT history, uh, you don't have any previous IT job experience, get your A plus, get it, get it, get it. It builds tremendous hardware side foundation, uh, covers a lot of ground, but doesn't go terribly deep. You know what they say, it's like, you know, uh, a mile wide and an inch deep. It doesn't go very deep, but um, some of it can go a little bit deeper than you're going to be exposed to in most cases, but it's very good information to know as a foundation. If you have a problem getting a job in IT as an entry level, don't complain until after you have your A+. Plus. Honestly, it gives you a tremendous leg up on getting positions as, as it's kind of a mythical certification nowadays, right? Uh, like I said, um, they got the airplay, the A+. Plus. It is like, that's the thing, right? I am not saying, obviously, anybody who is in IT deeply and has done it for lots of years and might have different uh, certifications know that the A+, plus is just the tip of a massive iceberg, right? <laughs> However, when you're trying to get into IT and you're entry level and you're doing desktop support and help desk and things like that, there's probably not a better certification for you to get in order to get yourself a position than the A+. Bottom line. Um, for the positions and the salaries you can expect, you can look down here. Um, mostly, again, it's going to be closer to what I have for the Security Plus, 32 to 42,000 starting. Um, getting into IT, you should be able to find, you know, a help desk or a desktop support PC technician type position uh, where you can do some hardware repairs, get into some software repair, Windows installations and things like that. And number one, my ITIL foundations. That price is $250. So some of you guys might be wondering whether it's ITIL. I don't know if you had exposure to it, but ITIL has definitely made its way into the IT scene and it's definitely a high return of an, on investment uh, certification. Um, it's 40 questions. Um, you need 26 questions right to pass. It's 65%. So, okay, right? You can pass it with 65%. <laughs> That's not bad if you need a certification that's going to have a high return on your investment. It gives you understanding of IT's role in supporting business process to keep organizations profitable and efficient, right? So every organization wants to be profitable and efficient. So it gives you that understanding of how IT plays that role for the business because the only reason IT exists is to support the business. So that's one of the things that you learn about with ITIL is that IT would not exist. People would not need exchange databases. People would not need SQL databases. People would not need programmers. People would not need desktop support engineers and network engineers if the business did not have a need for the services provided by that technology. You understand? So no matter how much you liked learning, no matter how much you like configuring and learning how to do this and do that, and no matter how smart you are, if the business can't use your skills to improve what they're trying to do in terms of operations, then they don't care how smart and how much skills you have. So it kind of makes you irrelevant. So you need to know how your skills can support business and organizations. Uh, it gives you business vocabulary to convert those bits and bytes into service processes, strategies, designs, functions, roles, server level agreements, operational level agreements, stakeholders, right? Talking about stakeholders and how you can help them uh, get efficiency and in return, uh, including information on Iraqi model for like who's responsible, who's accountable, who needs to know, 
Uh, you got change management, capacity management, incident management, root call analysis, service catalogs, and more. So it gets really deep into how IT plays a role into the business aspects and business impact of an organization. And you can mirror that up so that you actually know what your position is and how important it is to the organization and what you can do in order to maximize your role and your efficiency in that role to bring additional value to your organization. Uh, it isn't very deep or very hard. Realistically, it's the easy exam from a mental taxation standpoint on this list. Uh, mostly a vocabulary type exam where you're just learning phrases and words and what they mean but it has extra value for those who maximize the content because there is a little bit more there uh, however uh, you don't really have to learn a hundred percent of everything that you're going to read in order to pass the exam because it's only a 65 percent to pass but if you do it'll give you a tremendous leg up um, it sets technicians apart from break fix guys right so it allows one a perspective of IT for the role it plays in businesses, allowing one to increase productivity and efficiency because one knows what impact would be the greatest um, by its business impact without needing to be told by upper management. So you know just from IT and being able to discern from a, a value standpoint what might be the most important things to your management because you have an IT perspective about um, um, the stakeholders and the customers, your service level agreements, your operational level agreements, things like that. When it comes to change management, capacity management, incident management, you're able to get metrics to be able to prove that you need this or need that in terms of resources. So it gives you a leg up in seeing how the company and how your managers might be looking at a total situation. Apart from you logging into your ticketing system and fixing one-off issues, you actually have a total picture and idea of what your department's function is in an organization and what the value that it brings and how to increase that value so you can make everybody inside it look better, including yourself. That's why it's so important. That's why it helps you so much. And as you can see down here, I don't know if you can really tell, but some of the higher end salaries for the ITIL get up to the 120000 a year, 132000 a year, 165000 a year. So, um... Are you likely to reach that? Of course, no, 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 no. But it does allow you to fast track yourself into positions of team leadership and or management. The management positions that I received came tremendously faster after I got ITIL information, knowledge and certification. So it's kind of like if you're going to get ITIL, please be aware that you're going to put yourself in a position and a light to uh, be able to provide tremendous value. And if you can instruct others on that, then you're going to be put into positions where you might possibly end up in leadership roles. Um, so, I mean, you can always choose to take a leadership role or not to take one. But again, I think it has a tremendous return on your investment because for the price, for the difficulty, and for how it scales, you can end up in management um, after three, four years if you got your ITIL your first year and you've had it for three or four years and you kept that knowledge up and you got your experience and you obviously kept improving, that ITIL is going to scale with you and it's just going to make you look that much more valuable to organizations in the future. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, building a foundation. This is the last little slide here. Just want to talk a little bit about combinations that you might want to look at. Uh, so if you're going to get one certification to start, I say get the A+, right? It's going to get your foot in the door. Um, if you're going to do a combination, you're probably going to do the CCNA and the CompTIA A+, right? If you're going to do a combination of two. Uh, CompTIA A hardware is going to or provide you with the desktop side, and the CCNA is going to provide you with the networking side with a little bit of exposure to security. Uh, the best combination of three where you got your A plus security plus and your CCNA. So that's almost like the Holy Trinity, but it doesn't have the network plus part of it. You're getting a certification that has a higher return on investment than the network plus and goes a lot deeper than to networking than the network plus. So it's kind of like the, 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 the CompTIA triad. Uh, however, you're getting a, a certification that has a lot more uh, value in terms of its name recognition and the information you're going to get. Uh, the best combination of four, and this is when you're like, you're getting up to four, yeah, you're getting up to four. You see CNA, A+, ITIL, and Windows 7. Um, and the Windows 7 MCTS, why I put that in there and why ITIL is in there, when the combination of three didn't have those two certs in it, or one of them, 
is because now you're talking about building a foundation that covers um, your growth into the next level a lot faster than the other ones could provide. The ITIL will give you that fundamental knowledge of the organization you work for and the Windows 7 will help you start to do deployments and do imaging and things like that. So that'll fast track you to doing desktop support level two, desktop engineering system administration, network technician stuff a lot faster than oh say having uh, CCNA, CompTIA A+, Security Plus would with a ITIL. And a fast track. Uh, if you were to want a fast track, go ahead and get your MCSA 7. So get your 7680 and maybe 7685 or 7686, 7686 with a CCNA and an ITIL. You can skip your A+, at that point. That's going to look very good on your resume and give you your biggest bang for your buck um, if you're starting out in IT and you wouldn't want to make this a career. Uh, so why did I rank uh, ITIL again so highly? So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this analogy. Um, you know, when everyone talks about their favorite superpowers, right? Like, well, what's your favorite superpower? Is it flying? Is it running uh, super fast? Is it, you know, uh, you know, heat seeking laser beams from your irises, whatever, you know, and they, they, they hardly ever pick mind reading, right? Uh, when in fact it probably would be or is the strongest power you can have uh, to read one's mind is to know before action can even be realized allowing one to maneuver and position oneself for the best counter or preemptively accomplished task before they're even asked it allow one to seemingly be one step ahead and present oneself in the best light possible so ITIL is the closest thing to mind reading for IT's relationship when it comes to business needs and expectations while there may be sexier certifications, this paired with those gives one a nice leg up on the competition. And the return on this investment has exponential growth with each cert and year of experience gained henceforth. So that's why I rank ITIL so highly because neither one of these will scale with you the way that ITIL will. Your CCNA will only scale with your experience to the point that you're actually being able to touch and do a lot of the things that you're able to do but at some point you're going to have to get the CCNP or CCIE if you want to reach a different stratosphere same for the A plus same for the security plus uh, the ITIL however can scale with you all the way up into management in which case you might already be in that extra high level stratosphere and even though there are a lot um, deeper um, levels to ITIL, the ITIL foundations actually cover um, a lot of the stuff that you would need to just get into management. So those are my certifications. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful.